This is the new Kia EV6. Tesla, you better watch out. Jared here with CarBuzz.com and I am out in sunny California to drive a very special new electric car. This is the 2022 Kia EV6. It offers up to 310 miles of range, up to 576 horsepower, and would you just look at it? This could be the most exciting Kia we've seen in years, so let's take a spin. Let's start out on the road where I'm going to explain why the EV6 is such an important vehicle for Kia. It's their first model to ride on the Hyundai Motor Group's new eGMP platform that also underpins the Hyundai Ioniq 5 and the upcoming Genesis GV60 and many other cars after those two. The EV6 has a lot of range, both literally in terms of driving range and in terms of the breadth of the offerings. There are so many different EV6 configurations to talk about, so I'm going to attempt to break them down for you. There are four different versions of the EV6 that you'll be able to buy, but only three are available at launch. You have the Light, which is an entry-level model. You have the Wind, which is an upgraded model. Then you have the GT line, which is the top-range sporty model. And then eventually, at the end of 2022, there will be a high-performance GT model. So the Light is gonna be the cheapest entry point into the EV6 range. It's gonna have a smaller 58 kilowatt-hour battery going to rear-wheel drive only and that will deliver you 232 miles of range. When you step up to the wind model you're going to get a larger 77.4 kilowatt hour battery and with that you can get rear wheel drive or all wheel drive. Now rear wheel drive is going to get you the best range 310 miles whereas all wheel drive is going to cut it down to about 274 miles. And range isn't the only thing that changes when you get the bigger battery versus the smaller battery and all-wheel drive versus rear-wheel drive. The EV6 has one of the largest gaps in power that I've ever seen from a vehicle. That base rear-wheel drive model with the small battery that I mentioned has only 167 horsepower. But if you jump to the larger battery with rear-wheel drive, that output goes all the way to 225 horsepower, which is a pretty sizable jump. But then if you go for the big battery with all-wheel drive, you get 320 horsepower. That's the one we're driving here in the GT line, and it is whew, very quick. I've got some drive modes that I can play around with here on the steering wheel. If you put it in eco mode, it's going to limit your horsepower. If you put it in sport mode or normal mode, you'll get the full 320. I'm gonna go ahead and stop and see what the zero to 60 feels like. Woohoo! All right, the power kind of runs out right from the initial thrust, but that was zero to 60 in about 5.1 seconds, Kia says. That's pretty darn quick for a crossover. And if that's not quick enough for you, that GT model that I mentioned that's coming out later this year has a whopping 576 horsepower. That's more than a Tesla Model Y performance. That's more than a Ford Mustang Mach-E GT performance. Kia says that model should be able to hit 60 in just three and a half seconds, which is as quick as a Shelby GT500 Mustang. And the EV6 is not just quick in a straight line because we've got the batteries mounted in the floor like most EVs. This thing handles extremely well for a crossover, although I think the EV6 kind of looks a little more like a station wagon. The steering, while not as sharp as some other Kia models that I've driven, like the Stinger, I think has more precision to it than the Ford Mustang Mach-E, although I haven't driven the GT version of that car. That being said, this GT line that I'm driving really compares with like the premium version of the Mach-E, so compared to that, I think the EV6 has a little bit more fun driving dynamics. When I toss the EV6 into a corner, I feel there's a decent amount of body roll, but then once it stabilizes, I have a lot more confidence in this chassis than I did with the Mustang Mach-E. Once again, Kia has designed a car that is really fun to drive. The switch to EV hasn't changed that for me. Before I pull over to talk about the interior, let's go over how you can charge the EV6, because that's obviously important when you're buying an electric car. There's some great news in that department because the EV6 is one of the first cars on the market that supports both 
400 and 800 volt charging at speeds of up to 350 kilowatts. Now, if you're new to the EV segment, that basically means how quickly you can replenish electricity into the battery. So basically what that means in real terms is if you can find a fast enough charger, you'll be able to replenish 70 miles of range in just five minutes. I don't even think you can stop to pee at a gas station that quickly. And let's just say on that very same stop, you wanted a cup of coffee, maybe a bite to eat, and you could sit in there for 18 to 20 minutes, you'll recoup a whopping 217 miles of range. That is the quickest charging EV money can buy. Of course, you can still fill up a gasoline car quicker than charging an electric vehicle, but boy oh boy, we're getting pretty close. Now that we're done with all of the nitty gritty stuff, I should probably talk to you about how the EV6 drives. This may not look like an enthusiast's car from the outside, but it does have the GT line badge on it, meaning that it should be pretty fun to drive. I'm happy to report that the EV6 is really fun. We've got this super curvy back road here. I feel that the steering is just a little bit more precise than the regular version of the Mustang Mach-E that I drove. We've got just a tad bit of body roll from this GT line model, but once it sets in, you can really feel confident in what the chassis is doing here on this curvy road. Of course, this is still not a high performance car. We've got skinny tires up front that are maximized for range. I feel when the GT model comes out, of course, it'll have a huge power bump over this regular GT line model, but we should also get some bigger brakes and wider tires that could turn this chassis into a real enthusiast delight. I don't think that the EV6 is quite as fun as something like a Stinger to drive, but I don't think it's super far off. I'm very excited to drive the EV6 GT later this year because I think that is going to be a laugh riot. While I've been driving, you might be curious if the EV6 makes any sort of noise because electric cars are obviously silent. The electric motors don't make a lot of noise, but a lot of automakers put in like fake noise through the speakers that you can play. Now, Kia has done this pretty well. So you can change the different levels of the sound. So you can have it basically off where it's making no sound, which is mostly how I've been driving thus far, or you can raise it to its highest volume, which I've just done. So now I'm gonna show you the four different sound settings that you can put on the EV6 that make it sound very different. The first one we're gonna hear is stylish. Kia says this provides the natural and refined sound of an electric vehicle. So let's listen. Yep, very angelic. The next one is called dynamic. Kia says this provides a powerful, dynamic sound for electric vehicles. Let's listen. Definitely lower and throatier there. Okay, let's wait for the road to straighten out. I'll hit it again. All right, a very different sound. Now let's go for cyber. This provides a new, futuristic electronic sound for electric vehicles. Let's listen. Oh yeah, that one sounds way more spaceshipy. That is very different from the other three. Before we wrap up our time driving the EV6 completely, I had a change of heart. Before lunch, I was driving the all-wheel drive version of the EV6 with 320 horsepower. I've since stepped down to the rear-wheel drive model, which only has 225 horsepower. Now remember, the rear-wheel drive version gets better range, but I wasn't expecting it to drive significantly different from the all-wheel drive version, but it does. Since there is no electric motor on the front wheels sending power out, the front wheels are freed up to just do the steering. And that makes the steering response just more natural. I can really just feel exactly what this chassis is doing. I have a little bit more slip from the rear end that I felt in the all wheel drive version, but it's super controllable. If you are an enthusiast looking to drive your EV on a winding mountain road like this, I suggest getting the rear wheel drive version. It feels better balanced. It feels more chuckable. It feels lighter. And remember, longer range, and you'll save money buying the rear wheel drive model. Listen, I know if you live somewhere cold where it snows all the time, you're gonna wanna get the all wheel drive. But if you live somewhere sunny and warm, trust me, get the rear wheel drive model. Remember how I said I didn't think the EV6 was quite as fun as the Stinger GT? Well. After driving this rear wheel drive model, 
I think I've changed my mind about that. This car is as fun as a Stinger GT. So now that we've pulled over from our drive, let's check out the EV6's interior. But before we do, be sure to smash that like button if you're enjoying this video so far, subscribe to our channel, and ring the notification bell to be alerted of our latest videos. And if you wanna read my full review on the Kia EV6, be sure to check out carbuzz.com. So if you have not been in a modern Kia, I implore you to check out the EV6 because your preconceived notions about what a Kia cabin should and probably does look like has changed dramatically, especially with this car. It's a really cool combination of ultra modern and eco chic. There's a ton of recycled materials in this car. And in fact, there are no animal materials within this cabin. We've got the top GT line, which is the nicest one that you can get of the EV6 until the GT comes out. We have an optional suede package here that I love. I love these seats. They're super comfortable, not as bolstered as, as I'd like for sporty driving, but I love the black and white suede combination. You've got vegan leather here on the side and the seats are heated and ventilated as well. And then aside Aside from the seats, we have other really nice materials up here. It's semi soft touch, but it has this really cool pattern on it that just makes the cabin feel like a more luxurious place to sit. But Kia says that there are over 100 recycled water bottles in here. So it shows that they are making a premium product that is also friendlier to the environment. And it's not just materials where Kia has really stepped up their game. The technology here is fantastic. We've got dual 12 inch screens. This one over here is for your infotainment. You can pull up your map on this screen as well, your other EV information. And then right here in front of me, I have my driver display with my speedometer, my range, uh, my power, my regen. And if I use the drive mode selector here, you can see that the gauges will change a little bit from eco, normal, and sport mode. This is the first Kia that I can think of that has a Meridian audio system. That's the same company that Jaguar and Land Rover use, and the speakers sound fantastic. You see we have other cool features too, like our 360 degree camera with super high resolution. Of course, I love that technology. Kia has been doing that really well as of late. Same with the blind spot view monitor. When you use their turn signals, you get these cool cameras that show you what's in your blind spot. All of this stuff is super intuitive and works very well, as does the highway driving assist feature. You've got this little steering wheel button. It'll kind of keep you in your lane on the highway. This is as close to self-driving as I would really want to trust right now. Kia even puts a blue light filter on these screens to make your eyes less fatigued from staring at them for a long period of time. And you may have noticed that right below the screen, we have this interesting ribbon. It's like a touch screen right here. Now these are usually hard buttons for things like map and radio, but as you can see, they've been replaced by a touch screen. I usually hate when automakers get rid of physical buttons, but Kia has done it in a very smart way. You can see I still have my volume knob. I also have my tuning knob. It's great that they've kept both. And if I push this little button on the screen right here, you can see that the whole display changes. So now instead of my hard buttons, it shows my climate control information there. And now the volume knob and tuning knob switch to my temperature controls. Do I wish that Kia would have just made this screen a little bit longer so that it could just fit both on it? Yes, but I think that this is a decently clever integration. I love how premium the EV6's cabin feels, and I'd go so far as to say that this feels more like a luxury car than a Tesla Model Y. Moving on to the back seat, the EV6 does not look that big when you see it in pictures, but it actually has the same 114.2 inch wheelbase as a Kia Telluride, which is a three row midsize SUV. Now it doesn't look as big because Kia has pushed out that wheelbase, so there's not a lot of front and rear overhang, but because that wheelbase is so long, I have a massive amount of room here in the back seat. I have tons of leg room and here on the controls, I can actually recline this seat back to get into a very comfortable position here. And since the EV6 is all electric and there's no transmission, the floor back here is completely flat. Now in terms of cargo space, that long wheelbase is going to help the EV6 be pretty roomy back here. We've got 27.7 cubic feet of space back here. I think the only issue with it is this sloping roof line is going to cut the cargo area a little bit. It could have been bigger. It is less spacious though than the Ford Mustang Mach-E and the Tesla Model Y. 
Now, Kia was smart to put releases in the second row for the trunk, but you also have secondary releases here in the trunk to fold down the seats. When you fold down the seats, you get a full 53 and a half cubic feet of space, which I think is plenty roomy. And while it's certainly not much, you do get a small frunk up here in the front. You see it says EV right here. Go ahead and open that up. You get a little itty bitty box, perfect for storing your charging cable, but not much else. Let's wrap up by talking about the styling, which is one of the EV6's main selling points. Here in the front, we've got this super sleek front end, a little similar to the Mercedes EQS, but a lot sharper. We've got this really short deck lid here up front, not like a long hood like you'll see on some other EVs like the Teslas of the world. I love these sharp angular headlights that lead into what Kia is calling its digital tiger nose grille very cool look up front. From the side, it's a little bit difficult to tell how big the EV6 actually is from the pictures, as I mentioned earlier in this video, which is why I've parked it next to the Telluride. This is Kia's three-row midsize SUV, the biggest vehicle they make. And as you can see, the EV6 sits much lower to the ground. It's obviously a much sleeker design, but in terms of wheelbase, the amount of distance between that front wheel and this back wheel, the two vehicles are actually identical. And I'm simply bewildered by the number of cool styling details that you get on this car. The wheels range from 19 all the way up to 21 inches. We've got these cool door handles that pop out of the body, making it easy to get in and out. You don't have to push and open like some other electric car maker out there. You've got this cool black accent that's different colors on different trims. It comes all the way down the side of the car and then spits up connecting to this cool tail light bar back here. I love this sleek matte gray color as well. Gives the EV6 a totally aggressive vibe. And if none of those details were cool enough, just check out the rear end of the EV6. There is nothing else on the road that even remotely resembles this. You've got this cool taillight that wraps around here that also functions as a spoiler. You have a secondary spoiler up here as well. I'm loving how the new Kia logo looks here on the EV6. And then within the taillights, you have this interesting detail. It's just so many things to look at back here. And while we're back here, I might as well show you the charging port. You just tap right here and a sensor will then open up the charge door right here via power. And then when you're ready to close it, you can just touch it and it will go automatically down by itself. This is not my favorite spot to have a charging port because if you pull into a spot, it's all the way back here, but it is closer to the battery. So they had to have less wires. So that was the 2022 Kia EV6. Pricing for the light rear-wheel drive model, the small battery, starts just under $41,000, and it goes up to $56,000 if you want the big battery all-wheel drive GT line like we've been driving today, and there's a $1,200 destination fee on top of that. But remember, you still qualify for a $7,500 federal tax credit, or at least most buyers will, that you can kind of factor into your purchase decision here. So would I recommend the EV6? That is a definite yes from me, if you were in the market for a new EV and you've already looked at vehicles like the Tesla Model Y, Ford Mustang Mach-E, and Hyundai Ioniq 5, the EV6 should be on your shopping list. The styling looks really cool in person. That interior and the technology in it is fantastic. And Kia has very competitive range in the EV segment. So if I were in the market for a new EV, I'd be visiting my local Kia dealership.